Okay. Hi, Chanel. It's like swamped all like, oh, wow, since I'm like right here. All right, so yesterday, we wrote down the definition of your um, slope at given a point. So, and so today, we are going to apply that. Well, let's recap really quickly. Can you find the slope if two points are given? Yes. 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 Like Ryan? Yes. Put that away. Okay. Uh, if two points are given, just like in Algebra 1, you can easily find the average rate of change. But what happened if only one point is given to you? Then what did we write yesterday? And I, I want to find one slope at this one point. What would you do? You pick a... What do you do? Another point. Find another point nearby. Would you guys agree? And then we're going to take the limits. Okay, We're going to take the limits as this point gets closer and closer to what? To that given point. Okay, so that's exactly what we are going to do right now. For y equals x squared minus 4x, and I'm giving you a point at x equals 1. Find a, the slope of the curve, b, the equation of the tangent. By the way, in the book, if you see find the tangent or find the equation of the tangent, that's a tangent line. Okay? And c, I'm going to ask you to graph that out. So first, you are given a point already. Where is your point at? Yep, x is 1. So how do I find the y coordinate for that? Plug it in. So here we go. So it's going to be 1 squared minus 4 times 1, which is going to be 4. So y is negative 3. Negative three. I'm just waiting for you guys' answer. Okay. Um, then from here, we would write point. It's your first time doing this, so... We are going to write down everything. Your given point is 1, negative 3. Next, we are going to pick a nearby point. Nearby point. Okay. So a nearby point, we're going to pick, remember, x is the point. Would you guys agree? I'm going to do 1 plus h. So x is going to be 1 plus h. And let me tell you about this h thing that you're going to see a lot. H is the space, okay? H is the gap, okay? Or how far it is from one. Does that make sense so far? So it can be on the right or on the left. That's really not important. So H is the, is the distance from your given point. So we want it to be as close to one as possible. That means this H value, we want it to be very, very close to what? Zero. Zero. You're right, okay? So since I have chosen a point near one called one plus H, I want to find that output, the y value of 1 plus h. So let's plug it in. f of 1 plus h is the quantity square minus 4 times that. So what goes in our parentheses? 1 plus h. 1 plus h. And 1 plus h. So let's FOIL that out. 1 plus h squared is going to be 1 plus how many h's? 2 h's. And h squared minus 4 minus 4h. We are going to combine like terms. So I would have 1h squared. Combine 2 and a negative 4h. That's going to be a negative 2h. 1 and a minus 4 is now going to be? Minus 3. Minus 3. You are correct. Okay. So your nearby point is now 1 plus h comma h squared minus 2h minus 3. How many points do we now have? 2. two. We're going to do the same thing. I have two points, so we are going to find the slope. Well, if you guys remember, the slope was f of b minus what? f of a all over b minus a. Well, I don't have a and b, but I do have 1 plus h, and I do have what? 1. Would you guys agree? So this is really pretty much your b, and this is your a. So we are going to write f of 1 plus h, because that's your b, true or false, minus f of a, which is f of 1. Is that still okay? All over 1 plus h minus, minus what? 1. Okay, but here's the thing. I'm going to have to use limits. The limits as h approaches what? Remember, what's h again? 
the space, right? Away from the given point. So remember, your given point was when x equals to 1. So I want it to be as close to what? Zero. To 0 as possible. Because I want it to be as close to 1, the given point, as possible. So the limit as h approaches 0. Well, I already have everything I need. I just now have to plug it in. So this is going to be limit as h approaches 0. What's f of h plus 1 or f of 1 plus h? We found it already. H square minus 2H minus 3. Take away. Take away what? What's F of 1? We found that as well. Negative, Negative 3. So that's going to be positive 3. All over. What's in the denominator now? Just an H. You're right. Okay. So these two guys are going to cancel. Oh, that's super fat. Uh, those two guys are going to cancel because the negative and negative will become a positive. What are you going to do now? I definitely factor out an h. So the limit as h approaches 0, take out an h. What's left? h minus 2. h minus 2 all over h. Can I cancel out one of those h's? Now can I substitute in 0? Yes. If I substitute in 0, what is the slope at h is co close to 0? Negative 2. Negative 2. Voila. So the slope is going to be negative 2 at the point x equals to 1. Okay. As your h, which is the gap, the space, gets super, 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 super close to zero. Now that I have a slope, how do you write an equation of a tangent line? What do you need, by the way, to write an equation of a line? Need a slope, right? What's your slope? Negative 2. You also need a point. Do you have a point? What's your point? That's right. So what do we do now to write an equation of a line? Point slope form. So y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So y minus a minus 3, so y plus 3 equals, what's your slope? Negative 2 times x minus 1. Let's distribute. By the way, do you have to use point slope form? No, you can use any form you want. Okay, okay let's distribute. I'm going to have y equals negative 2x plus 2. I'm going to move the 3 over, so minus 3. Final answer is y equals to what? Negative 2x minus 1. Now let's graph it out. What does y equals x squared minus 4x make? What curve is that? y equals x squared minus 4x. What curve is that? A parabola. You won't have a calculator. So how do you graph out that parabola? I need a, a, a what? I make a table. What else do I need? So I'm graphing x squared minus 4x. Anybody remember how to find the vertex? Vertex, how do you find the x coordinate of the vertex? x equals negative b divided by 2a. What's your b value? Negative 4, so negative, or ne negative is now a? Positive. 2 times 1, it's 2. So that's the x-coordinate of the vertex. How do you get a y-coordinate? Plug it in. So 2 squares 4, right, guys? Minus what? 8. So what's the y-coordinate? Negative 4. So vertex is positive 2, negative 4. All right, let's plot it. Do you have another point already on the curve? Zero, zero is beautiful. Can I just reflect it to the other side? Yes. So that's going to be what? Four, zero. Three points. Perfect. It's one negative three also on the curve? Yeah, right? So if you want to, you can plot one negative three right there and then reflect it. Okay, let's graph the line. How do we graph that line? What do we start with? Y and set at where? Negative 1. Okay. What's your slope? Negative 2. Negative 2. Down 2. Right 1. Whoa! It lines up. Tangent. Tangent. That means how many times can it intersect this curve? Once and only once. Look at that. That's a tangent line.
and it touched right on 1 comma negative 3. Back in Algebra 2, like every function that you guys study, did your teacher ask you guys to find the slope? No? The like the rate of change, that's what I meant, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we write varies beyond like the line. The line was the only one that we wrote like an actual number. Everything else we just kind of wrote varies. Now you know how to find it at every single function. Okay. So only for one point function. That's right. That's what every single point may have a different slope. So this curve will have infinitely many, many, many different slopes depending on what point I give you. Some are steeper than others. Where would you think would be steepest based on this? At the top or the bottom? Top. The top. And later, I'm going to give you a hint right now. Later, as the slope gets closer and closer to the vertex, what's happening? It's flattened out. What kind of slope is that when it's like completely flat? Ah, see? All right. Slope of, a, slope of a curve at a point. So we just used that formal definition. We're going to write it here. So in the future, you know exactly where to find it. Slope of a curve at a point. Here's your formula. We're going to use, oh, that's super fat. Um, limit of f of a plus h minus f of a all over as h approaches 0. So we saw that. Um, now, on the denominator, I'm going to move up, I'll move it back down. On the denominator, what do you guys remember when I took b minus a? What did it come out? What did it come out when the bottom, we used b minus a? What was the only thing that's left behind? h. So that's why in our formula, it will always be h. Okay. As where a comma f of a is the given point. Now your book, bless you, your book sometimes uses x as well. So they may have something like this, x plus h minus f of x all over h. Then the given point will be what? If that's a formula, what is your given point? X, x comma f of x. You're right. Okay. So either format, you should know that's what we need to use to find the slope at a point. So if your book says find the tangent, that means you're looking for the line of the tangent. That means you need a slope. Okay, example three. This one is quite tricky. Okay. It looks easy, but it's, it's easy if you know what we're looking for. Find the slope of the curve f of x equals absolute value of x minus 2 at the point x equals to 1. So we execute this normally. Are you given a point? Yeah, you're, gonna get, you're given an x. That means you need to go and find your? Your y. So f of 1 is absolute value 1 minus 2, which is going to be absolute value of negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is 1. So your given point is at where? 1, 1. 1. Okay. Just like earlier, we're going to pick a nearby point. Nearby point. Guess what we pick? 1 plus h. Okay. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find f of 1 plus h, which is absolute value 1 plus h minus 2 all over, not all over, 1 plus h minus 2 in the absolute value, which is what? H minus, h minus 1. Still in the absolute value. Would you guys agree? Can I just go and drop the absolute value? No. no. Okay. Now I'm going to use my formula. The limit as h approaches what? Zero. Zero. Okay. Bless you. Every time you do your homework, be, just write the formula down so by the time you're ready to take your test, you don't have to worry about memorizing it. It should already be in your brain. Okay. So the formula says find the limit of 
f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Do we know what f of x is? Yeah, what is f of x? 1. f of x is 1. Okay. Do we know what f of x plus h is? What's f of x plus h? Would you agree? That's the same thing as that, which is right there. Yes or no? Yep, we're just going to put it together. So here we go. Limit as h approaches 0. I'm going to chug in my absolute value of h minus 1 minus, minus what? 1. 1. All over h. Now what? Can you substitute in 0? No. no. What are you going to do? You can't really conjugate. What would you do so I can get an actual slope? Okay, so this is where absolute value is kind of tricky. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture. What I'm going to draw out is really this guy right here. I'm going to graph out y equals absolute value of h minus 1. Can someone remind me what h is again? The gap. The gap, right? The space. Would you guys agree? So if I were just to graph that out, okay? Remember, my input is h. h, and here's y. Where's the vertex at? 1, comma, 0. So here's 1, comma, 0. Would you agree that's 1, comma, 0? If I pick 0, what's my output? 1. Then I'm just going to reflect it. So here's my v-curve. So here's the graph of y equals absolute value of h minus 1. Now let me tell you, all absolute values can be rewritten as piecewise. Let's talk about this right piece in the green. If I said write me an equation of a line in green, what would that line be? Y equals 2. I'm going to use h. Are you guys okay with that? Would you agree that the slope is a positive slope of 1? Where's the y-intercept if I keep going? Negative 1. True or false? Then on the other side, which is the red side, if I said write me an equation of a line on the other side, what would you write? Negative h, uh huh, plus 1. Anybody disagree with that at all? Plus 1. Which is, you guys remember back in the days when you guys were solving for absolute value? That's like all pretty much it. You make it equal to two equations. One of it is exactly the way it looks, and then the other one you just have a negative in front of the whole thing. Okay. Can you see that there are two equations here? Which one, though, would you pick? If h is creeping closer and closer to 0, the red one or the green one? The red one. Why red? Yeah, look, h is getting getting closer and closer to zero. zero. That means this is the one that's applicable. Okay? Remember, h is a space, so I'll just graph up. So h is creating closer. So this one is the one I'm going to use. So substitute that there. So anytime you see an absolute value, there are always two choices, just like if you were to have a piece one. Does that make sense? So for that one, the red one is going to be the one that's more applicable. So we're going to take out the absolute value. We're going to write, in replace of the absolute value of h minus 1, we're now going to write negative h plus, plus what? One. Plus 1. And then minus 1 behind all over h. Can I cancel out the ones? Yeah. Yep. Cancel out the ones. Can I cancel out the h? So what's left over? That's right. So we found the slope. So again, when you have an absolute value and when you have a piece y, you have to be very cautious of what side or which piece you're going to use. Number four is very similar. Ex instead of an absolute value, you are given what? A piece y. We're going to do the same thing. Okay. Determine whether the curve, a piece y curve, f of x, 
equals negative x only when x is less than 0, and x squared minus x is when x is greater than or equal to 0. If this has a tangent at all, at x equals to 0. If it does, give it, okay? Give its slope. If not, tell me why not. So, to have a tangent, what does it mean to have a tangent now at one point? Does the slope have to exist? Yes or no? To have a tangent, would you need to have a slope? For sure. Without a slope, you can't have a line. So would you agree to have a tangent, you would definitely need a slope. To have a slope, would you agree the limit of h equals to 0 has to exist? For the limit to exist, the left and the right must be exactly the same. same. Okay, because as you can see, this is a piece y and there's some issues at zero. So what you need to do is we need to test out the left and right hand limits. Okay. So the limit, let me write the formula first. H approaches zero of f of x plus h minus f of x equal all over h. You have to, it has to exist. Yes or no? Because without the slope, you can't have a tangent. So first things first, we are going to do left-hand limit. Okay. So the limit as h approaches 0 from the left. Do we know what f of 0 is? They gave you x is 0, but do we find f of 0 yet? What's f of 0? Zero? Zero. Which piece are you using, by the way, first or second? second. The second. So that's 0 squared minus 0 equals 0. Perfect. All right. Now, we are going to use 0 plus h. Are you guys okay with that? Yes or no? Yes, no, maybe? Yep. Minus f of 0. I'm writing more than I normally would because it's your very first time. Well, f of 0 plus h is the same thing as f of h. True, false, maybe? Minus f of 0. We found it over here, which is what? 0 all over h. Well, what's f of h? And which piece are you using if we're using the left hand limit? The first one. Can we all agree with that? OK. So that's going to be the limit as h approaches 0 from the left. I'm going to have a negative h. True or false? All over h, which will give me a slope of what on coming from the left side? Negative 1. I'm going to hold on tight. Yeah, that's the way. So if you're going from... From the left, so that means... It's going to be a positive wave. Yeah, that means going to the, like that direction. Okay, so, so coming from here, so this is... I'm going towards zero. Uh -huh. So that means I'm picking this piece. So if it's a small negative number, right? Small it would be a small number. negative number. I can just cancel it. I'm negative one. Oh, okay. I, knew, I want to simplify first. So I don't need to plug in anything. Is that what you mean? Like these two can be reduced. There's not a huge brain fog, I don't know why. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just confused on the f of h. Because mm -hmm. you said we're using the first one, correct? The first piece was? Well, we're doing left hand limit, yes. Yeah, so that means we have to use the first one. Correct. So that's on the because that's on the other side of zero. Yeah. So that means it would be a really small negative number that we're using. Correct. What about a small negative number? It says it's on the left side of zero. But why does it have to be? Tell me what you're thinking. Well, h and h would be the same. So it doesn't matter if you use any. You can use negative. You can use negative one for all I care. Because mm -hmm. if you plug in right, but the h and h are they're canceling, right? So let's say, even if you use a small, like, let's say negative 0 0.001, right? That's h, but there's a, ne there's a negative 1 in the front divided by, if that's your h value, by all mean, mm -hmm. that's canceling still, right? Okay. Yeah, so either way, it doesn't matter what you use, OK? okay? So that's why when we can, we simplify it first before we have to pick a value. Does that make sense? Okay. Same thing with the right, guys. 
So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to jump all the way to uh, probably here. Are you guys okay with that? Yes, no, maybe? Okay, except that I'm going to change the H to what? To the zero positive. Okay. So now I have F of H minus. Question number two. Would this ever, 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 ever change? F of X. Would that ever, ever change? Does the algebra value change ever? No. no. So that will always be maintaining at the same value. It doesn't matter what direction you're coming from. Okay. Now the next question is, what piece are you going to use? The second one. The second one. Okay. So that's going to be limits as h approaches 0, positive. That's going to be h squared minus h. Is that okay for plugging h in? Minus 0 is going to be 0 all over h. Can I factor out an h? So that's going to be h minus what? 1 all over h. Can I reduce the first h to h's? That means you're left with then what? h minus 1. Now can I substitute in 0? When I substitute in 0, what's your slope? Negative 1. So the question was, does it have a tangent at x equals to 0? Yes or no? Yes. If it says yes, give it slope. So what is the slope? Negative 1. Okay, that's where we're going to stop for today. Yeah, Trey. So